All right, hello guys, how's it going? Today, we're gonna to be talking about multiple tornado outbreaks that are gonna be possible. We're first off gonna be talking about the one that I featured in yesterday's video, but also it's come to my attention that there is two more that are gonna be possible in the coming days and weeks. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do the weather-related content, and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, what is your favorite ice cream flavor? Give me a good reason for why that's the best one, and I'll be picking a comment for tomorrow's video. All right, now let's get right into this video, and as you can see, we have our categorical outlook for day three, which is going to be Sunday, April 19th, and like I said in yesterday's video, I was expecting an enhanced risk or moderate, and you can see we have a very large enhanced risk so far with the potential for a moderate risk in there, usually when we see the day three enhanced risk, that means there's a lot of time for this to be upgraded. Also, they've given a lot of space for a moderate risk to be added within there. So I wouldn't be surprised to see this stay in enhanced risk or get upgraded to a moderate risk. You can see for a lot of areas like Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, the Panhandle of Florida, and even throughout Georgia, we're going to be dealing with that enhanced risk. As we look at that uh, probability outlook, you can see we actually have a hatched risk there as well for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, and Georgia, likely for tornadoes and hail, I would assume. Now, we're going to be looking at something called SIPS, and what this is, is it's basically an analog-based forecast for severe weather. We're going to be taking a look at that in a second. It's going to tell us our percent probability of tornadoes and severe weather in general. Very, very interesting stuff coming up here. And then we're going to start talking about some of those other upcoming tornado, major tornado outbreaks that are going to be possible throughout the next couple of weeks. All right, so here's that normal severe weather, and you can see that this is within 110 kilometers of a given area. We can see that they're expecting for uh, Sunday that we're going to have a 60% chance there for Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama. Again, this is based on analog, so this is based on them using the GEFS model and comparing it to actual severe weather events that have happened in the past, and then based on that, giving us a forecast. So that's the general severe weather. Let's move on to hail, and like I mentioned in yesterday's video, I'm expecting a large chance for hail this upcoming Sunday, and you can see 60% chance there for Louisiana and areas like that. Very, very large percent chance in all of these green areas. And then let's look at that tornado risk, and you can see mostly for in between Louisiana and Mississippi, and unfortunately, this is the same exact area that we saw that tornado risk uh, just a few days ago on Easter Sunday, so it's looking like another tornado outbreak is going to be possible this upcoming Sunday in a very, very similar area to last Sunday. Now, let's go ahead and move on, and we're going to take a look at the Cape for Sunday, and you can see it's very high, 2,000 in the yellows, and then even 3,000 and above in the reds. That's definitely sufficient for a lot of severe weather there. Uh, let's look at that significant tornado parameter, and we see major values coming out of this model. We see four to five significant tornado parameter there for Louisiana, Mississippi, and even in through Alabama. That's telling me we're going to have a very high chance for tornadoes. Probably a 10 or even 15% chance of tornadoes is going to be issued this Sunday. Uh, especially here, once you look at the shear, we see 75 to 100 shear there for Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi. I'm going to guess that we're going to at least have a 10% chance for tornadoes somewhere there in between Louisiana and Mississippi. Now, we're about to move on, and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at that simulated radar for this Sunday, and then we're going to start taking a look at some of those upcoming uh, next severe weather risks. The next one after this one is going to be for the Thursday, April 23rd. All right, and as you can see here, we're going to be dealing on that same hour that we looked at our shear, our significant tornado parameter, our cape, all of those values looking very, very ripe. We're going to be dealing with thunderstorms for Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. That's going to be telling me that we're going to have high potential for supercells. With the amount of cape that we have and the amount of precipitation that's expected, I'm going to guess that we're going to have mostly embedded supercells. And what that means is it's basically going to be a line of storms that's all together, but there's going to be supercells kind of within all of that. And that's kind of dangerous because it would lead to more rain-wrapped tornadoes. Earlier on last Sunday, we saw more discrete supercells, which means individual storms not connected. And then later in the day, they became more uh, embedded and they were connected later in the day towards Georgia and South Carolina. So it looks like we're going to have more of that embedded supercell activity. As we take it to about 2 a.m. on Monday, you can see most of those thunderstorms arrive for Georgia and South Carolina just as they did last Sunday. Now let's go ahead and look at that cape 
for, again, Thursday, April 23rd. And you can see we're going to have 1,000 amounts in those kind of greenish, bluish colors. And then 2,000 plus in those yellows that are coming on shore for Louisiana. And as we look at the simulated radar, you can see that we do have a lot of thunderstorm activity going on for Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. And that's likely going to be our next outbreak, potentially a major outbreak. It's really far out, so it's hard to say the severity, but we are looking at the potential for, you know, severe weather on Thursday, April 23rd, possibly Wednesday, the 22nd into the 23rd, I would say. And as we take that to about 2 p.m. on Thursday, the 23rd, you can see that reaches, again, South Carolina and Georgia. So a lot of these, we call this the Dixie Alley down here in the deep south states in the southeast. Uh, and this is an area where we also see a lot of tornadoes. And this is looking like classic Dixie Alley tornado outbreaks. We have multiple of these showing up. Look at the bulk shear here. Those reds and yellows indicating areas with very, very high shear, definitely going to be sufficient for tornado activity. If this was to verify, obviously, this is pretty far out. We are looking at the potential for this. The European model and the Canadian model also have this outbreak of, of varying intensities as well. Now, we're about to move on. We're going to look at that third potential outbreak, which is going to be for Saturday, April 25th. And it's going to be very interesting to take a look at that one with you guys. This one looks like it's more major than the second one, but possibly similar to the first one. All right, and first things first, we're looking at our cape values here. And you can see, again, in the bluish, greenish colors, that's where we're at 1,000 to 2,000. In the yellows, that's where we're at 2,000 to 3,000. And in those red shades that I can see some of for Texas and Louisiana, that's where we're at 3,000 to 4,000 cape. Definitely sufficient. And again, our CAPE is our convective available potential energy. And this is thunderstorm fuel. This is what thunderstorms eat to become stronger, basically. Uh, and here's your bulk shear. You can see we have a little bit less of this, but you could tell that there's a trough for the central United States headed eastward. And this usually leads to some pretty significant tornado activity when we see a setup like this. So I'm going to be very, very interested to see how this would play out if we were to see a setup with the shear. Similar to this one that we're taking a look at here. Now we're about to move on and we're going to take a look at the simulated radar for this third potential tornado outbreak. Now first things first, here's at about 8 a.m. on Saturday, April 25th. And you can see we do have some thunderstorm activity there for Mississippi, Alabama, and up through Tennessee. You can tell that we do have a trough there for the central United States, potentially going to be set up uh, let's go ahead and move on towards about 8 p.m. on Sunday, or actually on Saturday, April 25th, once again. And you can see, uh, once again, that reaches Georgia and South Carolina. So all three of these take the same exact track. They are of varying intensities, obviously, and varying likelihoods. But right now, the GFS has three potential tornado outbreaks all in one model run. Very, very interesting to see this many outbreaks just for April. This is very, very early in the tornado season, and we're already seeing a ton of activity. Speaking of that, I wanted to mention a few things about how this tornado season has gone so far. First things first, we're taking a look at our total tornadoes by EF rating from 2019, and you could see we had only three EF4s. That's actually a lot. That's pretty average number, 1,500 tornadoes total. Very above average tornado season last year, actually. Very, very above average tornado season season we had. Again, three EF4s, 33 EF3s. Let's take a look at what 2020 had so far. 2020 has had so far. And you can see we've already had three EF4s as well this year, and it's only April 17th. The peak of tornado season is in May, and we're not even there yet. The later half of April is usually much more active than the first half of April, and we're still not even to that, and we're already seeing a ton of more activity that's looking likely for the later half of April here. It's going to be very, very interesting to see where this tornado season ends up being compared to the rest of tornado seasons historically, but I'm expecting it to be very, very high up there. I honestly was calling for a historic severe weather season this year, and so far it is playing out just that way. A lot of people questioned my forecast for it to be a potentially historic tornado season, but it is very much so panned out that way. Here's our total killer tornadoes, basically our fatalities from tornadoes of 2019. And you can see that we actually had 42 fatalities last year from tornadoes. 31 of those were before May. 
31 deaths from tornadoes before May. Keep that in mind. Keep that number in mind. Now let's take a look at 2020 so far. And as you can see, we already have 69 total fatalities from tornadoes. And I don't even think that number is final from the April 12th and 13th deaths. So, I mean, it already is shaping up to be much more major than last year's tornadoes or tornado season. And last year's tornado season was much above average and we're already on pace to be way ahead of 2019. So my forecast for a much above average or even historic tornado year has really, really panned out so far. Unfortunately, that's one of those ones I don't even want to be very accurate, but it was. Now for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys hamburgers or hot dogs and infamous said, oh, hamburgers, because it's the best food and it can be turned into anything. And I think that's really what the summary was from that comment competition. Hamburgers are much more flexible and you can do a lot more with it than a hot dog. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I will see you guys in the next video.